Good morning, everyone. Uh, we'll be begin straight away with uh, the instrumentation of the Atlas. So basically, uh, C1 is now the latest workhorse in terms of uh, cranial vertebral junction, and that is uh, a relatively new revelation compared to what uh, earlier used to have occipital serratic fixation. We used to skip the C1. So uh, nowadays, C1 is uh, considered to be the force nucleus, which needs to be, uh, you know, needs to be stabilized to. Uh, correct any kind of deformity or instability in cranial vertebral junction. So extremely important to understand the anatomy of C1 so that you know exactly where you have to put your screws, how your screw is going to go. In general, the area that needs to be uh, purchased is the C1 lateral mass. The size of C1 lateral mass is roughly 20 into 18 millimeters. And <coughs> there are different ways of, uh, of purchasing C1. There is one by Tan which says that you need to approach, you may approach directly through the posterior uh, arch of C1, right? So you put a screw in the posterior arch, so you don't need to expose down uh, up to the down up to the anterior point which is normally seen in Goel's technique. So you will not need to either mobilize or expose the C2 nerve root. So this is the Tan technique where you are starting at the level of uh, posterior arch. This is another image which shows. Uh, this is the around 4.6 millimeter is the amount of space that we get uh, in, in use if when purchasing through Tans technique. So 3.5 millimeter screws are the standard screws that we use, and uh, the length is usually anything between 18 to 22 or 24 millimeter. And this is the total amount of space that is available. And uh, any questions right now? I would like to make it more interactive. Any questions right now? Any doubts in anybody's mind? regarding the images that or the views that we see here. Any queries? So fine. So now let's uh, take the lateral, uh, C1 lateral mass uh, insertion. So this is the Goyle technique which is way back in 1994 where the entry position is actually in the midpoint of the lateral mass after you expose the lower part of the body. And the, and the direction is slightly medial, 15 to 20 degrees medial and the direction in uh, later view is slightly superior. So this is the standard that's used the most commonly. Uh, this one was described in 2003, basically in case you don't want to avoid uh, uh, exposing the lateral mass. In that case, you just take exactly stay 19 millimeters away from the uh, midline. Find, look at the entry point in, make a small bar and then go directly into the lateral mass. So this is, uh, it has an advantage that you're not exposing this area, which is the, but then also you're not able to put any graft there. Uh, the disadvantage is that the chances of the minor breakage in this. Uh, this is the one which is now considered to be the compromise between the two, where you are actually going from posterior aspect, but at the same time, it's, you're making a small burr at the lower part of the lamina. So it's not actually bang in the middle of the uh, posterior arch, it's you making a burr. So you're actually doing a junction of posterior arch as well as the lateral mass. Here the directions will obviously change slightly depending upon how you enter your, uh, about what entry point you make. So uh, this is another view where you can make out, this was through the posterior arch and this is where the normal coil technique is, uh, where we enter the screw using normal coil technique. Uh, this is another image again which shows how you need to retract the root to be able to. Uh, I'll, you don't need to take photographs, I can give the PDF or uh, PowerPoint after this. So, uh, this is again the bottle battery. This is at risk when you are using the tank technique. That's why the third technique was introduced so that you don't, you know, your instruments don't slip up into the bottle battery. Uh, this is another image where it shows that uh, this will be entry point for your normal coil technique. So, uh, this is the C1 and C2 stabilization. Uh, you must uh, understand that the C2 screw will be relatively more cranially inclined. So that allows your heads of C1 and C2 screws to be slightly far apart, which allows for distraction and compression. So that's the uh, natural anatomy uh, you know, coming to your health at, at, at that time. So this is, again, this is the normal entry point we'll discuss this shortly in C2. This is C1-C2 fixation. This is the entry point for a power screw, and this is the entry point for a transarticular screw. But we'll uh, come to that. Yes. So now this is a very, very important slide and image, which will help you differentiate between what is a power and what is a pedicle. So the pedicle would be the part, as it's normally defined, as the one which joins the posterior elements with the anterior body. 
So this is the pedicle because it's the segment which joins the posterior elements of the C2 with anterior uh, body. And pars is typically defined as the pars intraarticularis, which means it's a part between uh, one articular facet and the other articular facet. So this is considered to be the pars intraarticularis. So we have to understand when you are taking a purchase of pedicles, obviously your screw direction is going to be a lot more medial. This is usually not required except in trauma cases where you feel that there is a fracture exactly here and you need to purchase that. Uh, mostly we are able to get away with the par screw and uh, now we will come to the entry points. So this is for a typical par screw as we have just discussed, this is the pedicle here, this is the par. The pedicle entry point will be slightly lateral because we want to approach uh, medially and the par entry point will be slightly inferior than medial compared to a normal. So this is the pedicle screw typically directed medially. So X, these angles are just uh, you know for our uh, uh, for our uh, initial knowledge. Ultimately, a lot of what you do is you're able to put is what depends on what you see in the during the surgery. And uh, this is for a C2 pass screw. Here the angle is a loss lot lesser in um, right to left, whereas it's a lot more steeper. So that will 50 degrees angulation because you need to go all the way up to the joint because that's where you, where you get the maximum purchase. Uh, this is another uh, image which shows the pedicle entry point. So the pedicle entry point would be, uh, if you divide this into four parts, it will be on the upper outer quadrant. It is in, in nutshell, it's closer to the vertebral artery uh, compared to the uh, to the pass screw. So that's why it's going to be more risky as well. So this is the pass screw direction is a lot more medial. It's about 40 degrees and 30 degrees cephalad. Any qu queries right now? Any doubts? Because you may want me to go back to those images again, so might as well ask me now. Uh, right, right, right. Cranial angle is a lot more in uh, power screw compared to a pedicle screw. So this is a pedicle screw where the angulation uh, which is medial would be only 20 degrees and it's uh, fifth, around 50 degrees. Achha, this is a different slide. Yeah, this is what I wanted to show you that a lot of different descriptions have been given. So you could have a 20 degree, 20 degrees. Uh, orientation or you could have a 40 and 40 degree um, orientation also then again this one is 40 and 30. So important remembering angles is not important the entry point will determine what angle you are going to take. So it's the exposure intraoperatively extremely important to expose it all the way up to the joint and even beyond you can even see the pedicle you can actually palpate the pedicle intraoperatively and that's the safest uh, way of instrumentation. Uh, this is a salvage technique always uh, uh, not always preferred but uh, used in some cases where either the pedicle is um, you know not accessible or the vertebral battery is high riding and you're not able to go to take a good purchase in the pars intraarticularis and uh, it also is extremely useful in patients where you have a uh, c2 and c3 fuse and you have a good posterior um, mass of the lamina or c2 and c3 where you, which can take a purchase of two screws. You see these these, kind of, these things are more common in, in children. So you need to have a good bulk of the C1 and C2 little uh, lamina to be able to take, put two screws in this. So this one starts uh, from the in the opposite direction just at the junction of lamina and the spinous process and similarly if this one is slightly cranial the other one will be slightly caudal in terms of entry point and you are able to uh, the angle is about 50 to 60 degrees usually you are able to get in about 25 to 30 millimeters of screw uh, into the into the lamina. It's important to keep a dissector below the lamina so that you're not you don't have a medial breach, uh, in, in internal breach. Uh, this is a trans articular screw in instrumentation. This is uh, we don't use it now uh, very often nowadays, but it is a very good tool for people who are beginning to do cranial vertebral junction C1C2 fixation for patients who've got a reducible AD. This is extremely important prerequisite. You should have a reducible AED and in those reducible AEDs then you start a lot inferior compared to the pass entry point and then you are able to take it even further up. It's like 50 degrees cephalad because you want to cross the joint and enter into C1. Right? And again in this case also a high riding uh, vertebral battery will be a contraindication. Right? This is an, uh, the entry point, little middle midpoint in uh, C2 and 3 meter meters from the lower end. So that is how steep you start. Just 3 meters uh, at the junction of C2 and C3 facet joint is the entry point and then you go uh, 
10 degrees medial and just drill the entire uh, up to the entire length across the joint of C1 and C2. And after that, you have to implement it at around 50 degrees cephalite direction. So this is the final picture that you're going to get. Uh, one of the limitations of this technique is that you do have to end up doing wiring because <coughs> it's suggested that you do a three-point fixation because two-point fixation is not very uh, stable in rotation. So in that case, you have to wire the C1, C2 uh, posterior laminae. You can't get rid of them. So laminectomy is not an option in these cases. So this is uh, the final picture. <coughs> Uh, Lateral mass screws, I'm sure quite a few of them of you are doing it. There are various uh, ways described in in terms of angulations, the entry point. The one we most commonly use, you know, and that's taught and practiced is the Megarel technique, where the, um, the the direction of the screw will be parallel to the facet joint. So, you know, the facet joint actually helps as a acts as a guide in directing the, uh, the the screw into the lateral mass. So, this Royal Camille technique is this bank horizontal so you can see there's no angulation between the horizontal and the and the screw placement this gives us less space because we are actually uh, risking the vertical battery as well as the um, as well as the exiting nerve root uh, similarly anderson's also is another variation and is another variation um, you can take these slides from it after the presentation in case you want to uh, take them otherwise this only more for, for theoretical interest we are going to focus more on the Magadil technique because that is considered to be you know one of the safer and more easy easy uh, procedures to learn where the direction is going to be the entry point is slightly above the midpoint of the lateral mass we can discuss this when we are going to uh, do the demonstration down there how we divide the lateral mass into four coordinates and we decide the entry point so um, this is, as I said, the entry point is in the medial superior quadrant. Some people start slightly inferior depending upon how well they feel the purchase is going to be because you don't want to damage the, you know, the lateral mass while putting the screws. So this is uh, the uh, magnetic insertion uh, point and the direction is 25 degrees medial and 45 degrees cranial. It's actually uh, when you put in a small dissector into the upper facet joint as you can see here this is going to give you a direction, better idea about the direction of the screw so this is how the uh, Roy Camel and Magnell screw techniques vary this is the entry point you divide it into two parts into four parts and then slightly medial and just two millimeter above in the upper or, or middle quadrant you pick the entry point so coming to the last portion, this is the uh, we're going to be showing and demonstrating it in the lab as well. Uh, C3 to C6 pedicle screws. Now pedicle screws are uh, um, in this area very difficult to put. I personally don't have too much of an experience in this, but it's considered to be a very very strong screw compared to lateral mass. Uh, even though it's also been observed that you don't need it in majority of patients but in some patients where you have a deformity where you have some kyphosis and you want to correct it so pedicle screws are the ones which will actually have the best holding power with lateral mass screws you must remember that if there is a kyphosis there's no point trying to connect it with lateral mass screws you cannot correct it because they don't hold that well so pedicle screws are extremely useful for that the downside is of course that every patient's pedicles cervical pedicles are very small so you need to do a ct scan and evaluate and calculate the exact pedicle size before you embark on this uh, and also look at the for the vertebral battery sometimes you'll find the vertebral battery is too medially encroaching so you're risking it so any size less than uh, four millimeter in general is, is uh, sometimes some people say five millimeter of pedicle size is a contraindication for pet putting a pedicle screw on that level right so uh, in general uh, we can discuss those angles there <laughs> basically another um, negative aspect about this procedure is that you have to go very very medial so if the exposure has to be very wide you're actually going to be putting in screws at 45 degrees uh, there are a few techniques which help to improve your uh, accuracy in pedicle screws we'll discuss those as, as well but in general the uh, take home point should be that you should limit these only after you put in at least uh, maybe 10 15 20 cases of uh, c7 pedicle screws so c7 pedicle screws are the easier one easier ones to place because there's no vertebral artery there so if you start with that and you start uh, you know get familiar with that, that technique then gradually you can use it in sub uh, sub axis cervical spine between c3 and c6 as well so this is the typical direction that you're going to get when you're putting a pedicle screws uh, this is uh, a very uh, useful um, maneuver you if you make do a bit of laminophorinotomy what you are doing actually is that you are 
visualizing the pedicle with, and also able to feel the pedicle uh, with help of a probe. So what you see here, the dotted, these are the pedicles, right? So your entry point is actually starting at the upper and outer portion of the pedicle, as you can visualize here. So which is actually going to translate into the junction of superior and inferior arterial facet and on the slightly onto the lateral part of the midline. Uh, middle of the lateral mass. So this is going to be the entry point. So this is, uh, this much bone removal will help you in identifying the pedicles and then you can, the middle pedicle wall is uh, stronger than the lateral pedicle wall, so it's important to stay as medial when you are putting in your uh, pedicle probe so that you're not able to, so that you don't puncture the lateral wall, also you don't energy, uh, injure the vertebral battery. So this is the track, this is the pedicle probe being placed and a particular probe being placed and this is the angle angulation of you tend to you want to achieve uh, some people have also used uh, preoperative ct calculations from the spinous process to the possible lateral entry point so that use that to measure it intraoperatively so that is the entry point for them and then another way of uh, looking at it is some people f look at uh, try to put the screws parallel to the angle line which is formed from the spinous process to the little uh, limit of the lateral mass. So this will also give an idea about what your angulation should be. This is an example of uh, um, a bone saw metal where the level of fire anatomy has been done and they made a burr hole and you are able to actually feel the pedicle and take the screw in. So outer pedicle diameter less than 4 meter is considered to be a contraindication. Thank you.